you like Huey Lewis in the news? Many of us today really, really love and are fascinated by the villains and the stories we watch. But why do we relate to these villains so much? And why are we so fascinated, especially to those that are completely unredeemable in terms of the moral values that we hold? Do we perhaps relate in some way to this or even envy the strength, and the unstoppability of a villain? Is something terrible happening inside of us? We have all the characteristics of a human being, flesh, blood, skin, hair, but what are our identifiable emotions? What is the potential that we have when we give in to our carnal desires? And how does society allow us to indulge in these things? Today we will be talking about American Psycho, directed by Mary Heron and starring Christian Bale. As we look into the minds of ourselves, society, and our potential for carnage. Welcome to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast, where we analyze stories and films that help us make sense of life. We are four friends with backgrounds in storytelling, filmmaking, teaching, and narrative therapy. Join us on our quest towards telling and living our stories more meaningfully. I'm Derek Hatch. My name is Nick Natal. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Joseph Wilson. I'm Jason Lin. So, guys, I was thinking Doris here tonight. <laughs> if you want, can you I, get I, us a reservation? I, I can get yeah. us a reservation to Dorzia. I heard it's pretty booked, though. That, I know people. They know me there. Okay. <laughs> Fiending for some free-range rabbit and herb french fries. I would love you know, some swordfish meatloaf I with would love, onion marmalade. Could I have some squid ravioli with pepper <laughs> parmesan? I bet Paul <laughs> Allen could get us in the door. He could get us a reservation. I just want some three Paul. shrimp cocktail on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul Allen? Isn't he still on the Fisher account? He's got a really nice business card. Yeah. And apartment. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk he has about a, it. It's, it's, he has it's, a not that, it's not that nice. It's not that nice. <laughs> oh, man. What's this up? Better, yeah, this is better than your last apartment. You know what? Hey, hey, Nick, do you like Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, the amount of dread that you feel when getting asked the question, hey, so do you like Phil Collins, Genesis? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we are talking about American Psycho, and Jason is going to walk us through it today. We are in the middle of this villain series, Hearts of Darkness. And so this is your pick, Jason. That's so a, that's a dope series. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, guys, I picked this movie, which completely fits in with my personality. Uh, you- Jason is in full costume. <laughs> I don't, and, did we notice? Did we mention that? No, we have not mentioned have. that yet. So, yeah. Full American Psycho costume with the raincoat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and the and the, the gloves and the and the CDs and the, the music is important. It's all here. But uh, it is just a handout. So if we don't put out any more... Of You'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last episode. Yeah. No, I, I, had, I had to go hard on this one. But yes, so I... I'm call Jason Davis the whole episode. Yeah. Davis? Yes. So I picked this movie because I wanted to dive into why we like villains so much. I remember when we were talking about No Country for Old Men, mm-hmm. how how fascinating Anton Sugar was to me. And, mm-hmm. and I think, to well, t- of course, to a lot of people... And, you know, and then even us, like, why are we doing villains in the first place? You know, Hans Landa, mm-hmm. uh, Megatron. Why, mm-hmm. why are these villains so charismatic to us? Mm. So central to, to our stories, to us, how we relate, why we like and even almost root for the villains in some of the things that we watch. Yeah. Like, sometimes we're even just disappointed. Like, ah, he went out. Man, yeah. he, was, he was cool. Like, why are, we, why are they cool? Well, if you met this person on the street, you would hate them. You would mm-hmm. hate them immediately. Yeah, there's a distance. Yeah, there's a distance we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is what I wanted to kind of get into today, and and also how society kind of allows this or even encourages it to a degree. So American Psycho is a black comedy, and it is intended as a satire on that time on on Wall Street and all the money that was being made there and like the an ni- late of, 1980s, right? Yeah, yeah. And and Christian Bale was even talking about how he went there and was like kind of getting on the trade floor mm-hmm. and the people were like, "Yeah, Christian Bateman, awesome. Like mm-hmm. nice." Or Patrick we, Bateman. Or, Patrick, uh, yeah, Chris, uh, Patrick Bateman. Yeah, we like Patrick Pat Bateman. And he's like, "I ironically, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> right?" And yeah. they're like, well, "What do you what do you mean?" And so that is, it's very real. Chris, uh, Patrick Bateman is like, especially in the memes, like the last few years, we're kind of, we're basically on the tail end of it. It's a little late, but he was being almost portrayed as this ideal 
man. Yeah. You know, they'd always post a gif of him underneath, like, a scene of a man, like, standing up to a woman or just not being influenced by a woman or just sticking it to someone. And it's like, have you—I don't think you've seen the movie. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think you've seen this. Or even scary enough, they have seen the movie and they. Yeah. Well, and so. well, that was kind of your story too, right? Because you saw all these memes originally. Yeah. And you hadn't seen the movie, and you were like, "I gotta. I'm interested in." Oh, this. I would just go to the comments and scroll and just see where people's minds were at. You yeah. Know, there are some people saying, "Like this guy. Like, why do people like this guy?" And there's others that are like, "Yeah, man, because a woman's always like this." Or no, you just need to get on your grind with this and. It just gets typical, but enough of that. I want to get you guys' first reaction to this movie. <laughs> well, this is like my second time watching it, but the second time watching it is definitely like, oh, yeah, I'm noticing this stuff now. Like, it's, he's, I feel like he's just an avatar of, like, in, an indulgence on sin. Like, it's, yes. and then it's just, like, unstoppable. And because he's in the world, and this world is sinful, it's like, at the end, it doesn't matter. His confession doesn't matter because he's, He's in a sinful world committing what the world is. Yeah. Spoilers, by the way. Mm-hmm. Americans, I go. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. If you come into our stuff not knowing that we're going to spoil stuff, that's yep. kind of... Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I saw this movie when I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Of course. I, I, I have a very, like, clear, distinct memory of watching this movie with my friend and his older sister. I remember the moment the credits were running. It, it's It's actually pretty, like cool that we're doing this but i didn't really want to watch this film for the podcast i didn't think it was or i didn't remember it being that good of a film but i really noticed this time around how funny and how smart the movie is and jason's really unlocked that for me Mm -hmm. especially when we start talking about the food because Mm -hmm. it's (laughs) the mud soup oh man it is really arugula really really smart and funny and i think that is my takeaway this time yeah I think for me, I had a similar reaction to you, Joe, when you saw Fight Club for the first time. Mm. Like, I did not connect with this at all the first time I saw it. I was like, okay, why is Jason picking this? And even more importantly, how is this going to help any of us live a (laughs) meaningful story? But one thing that we do on this podcast is we press in, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I love about it. Because sometimes you encounter a story and you don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So... Rather than run away from that, you try to lean in and you try to understand because when you do that, you're going to actually understand something about yourself as well. Yeah. And so in pressing into American Psycho, I find it absolutely fascinating. And there's in in ways that I wasn't expecting it to. And I'll, I'll get more into it when we get into the conversation. But it's it's kind of like, again, like you, Joe, like it's like. It's not a film I enjoy watching, kind of like with you with Fight Club, right? Like, I don't enjoy watching this movie, but I enjoy talking about it yeah. and thinking about it, and, you know? So yeah. it's it's Picking interesting. It yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to, to really go through this. I think there is a sense of joy watching the film. There's some parts that I can just skip through, but mm-hmm. there, there are so many things that are really genuinely so funny like it, that I can pop it on and go, let's watch this scene real quick. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think this is a film that I wouldn't go and watch on my own if I'm bored mm-hmm. yes, late night, yes. but I would watch this with somebody and I would show this to somebody and mm-hmm. then I would have a good time watching it with them. Yeah, This but is definitely more of a group watch yeah. movie because mm-hmm. I watched it alone when I was bored at night and it was a hor- like yeah, I was like, not, this yeah, is not yeah. the way to watch this yeah, movie. That's a tough one. Yeah. I think watching it for the first, like this being the second time watching it, I was already like kind of, I already knew what was going to happen. Yeah. But looking at it and I was like, oh yeah, it is like... The food stuff, like what they talk about, it's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah. But it's so, like, but it's so smart in the way the the movie is as well. Right. Like right. I didn't. It unlocked something for me. Yeah. The second time watching it, too. definitely. Yeah. Well, why don't we go ahead and do the letterbox, and then we will letterbox. <laughs> that might be your nickname, Joe. Well, 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 well before I'm that, fine with that. Yeah. What I wanted to say is that like this movie is fun and it's funny, but in those scenes that you could just pick up and show to anyone. There's like a, there's a truth that's being yeah. said, mm-hmm. yeah. and when comedy is used, I think in a right and good way, like like a joke should make something funny and fun and course and humorous, but it's also showing you something like, hey, this is funny, but look at this, what's yeah. actually going on? Yeah, it's supposed to reveal. You know how they'll say it's like jokes 
always contains some truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if it's that truth is actually just used to get at someone and berate, then that's when we don't like them when you're belittling someone else. Right. But this movie is it's making something funny, but it's really trying to show something here. Yeah. The, and the humor definitely it, it highlights how smart it is mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what it's actually saying. Yeah, yeah. for and sure. That's why it's a there for sure. is definitely a good watch, I think. Yeah. It it reminds me of Star Starship Troopers. It's because that's kind of technically a comedy and like, but there's a whole yeah. bunch of murder in it. But there is a deeper meaning behind it as right. well. Right. Yeah. So let's get into the letterboxed description for the movie. I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. A wealthy New York investment banking executive hides his alternate psychopathic ego from his co-workers and friends as he escalates deeper into his illogical, gratuitous fantasies. Mm. I want to very much characterize Bateman right now. Okay. But I think as we were already talking about this, let's start with the setting, which is the society that... Patrick Bateman and his friends are living in. Mm-hmm. System. So the system. The system. This is the system movie. All right, all right, Malcolm. I think both no of our exit. movies. Yeah, I think both of our movies are system movies. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So this is specifically critiquing the high society of a New York investment bank. The yuppies. Executive yuppies. Yuppie culture, right? That's what they call it. I Ups. just had a revelation. Really, from the word yuppies? Now's the time oh, I'm yes, excited <laughs> because what when when uh, Christy mm-hmm. in air quotes is running from from Pat, Pat, and Your she boy. opens the yeah. in, mm-hmm. in, uh, when she opens the closet. What die are the yuppie. words? Die yuppie die. Die yeah. yuppie or die yuppie scum. Die yuppie die. Mm. And he painted that. So does he hate it too? Deep down, I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And he even asked, so so when his fiance asks him, if, if you don't like it, then why don't you just quit? Mm-hmm. And he says, because I want to fit in. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the tension in him. That yeah. is. Yes. That's what yeah. makes him so complicated. There's a lot yeah. of tension. A lot of tension in him. So what we see in the society, and we can go through the, you know, the details we see, but we see a society that is frivolous, ridiculous, uh-huh. expensive, hollow, full of comp- competition and one-upping each other. It's repetitive. They all they talk about is dinner and getting reservations. Yeah, and, and do- doing coke. Yeah, I was just saying doing coke in the restroom. Yeah, at the end he goes, "I'm not even hungry, but I want a reservation somewhere." Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. Like he's just mad. He's like, "We just need a reservation somewhere." Like mm-hmm. that's all that they really do. They don't do any work yeah. in this movie. Literally. Like they're just you on never calls. Yeah. Yeah. They're only making reservations for places. <laughs> that's it. That's all they do. That's the most work they put. Or they're drinking, smoking, or doing uh-huh. drugs. So uh, and and thinking of that too with the setting, Nick was saying like beforehand, it's like feels cartoonish, and it's like yes, yeah, it is cartoony, it's, yes. but it's still like. Back in, like, the 80s, because this is set in the 80s and stuff, yeah. right? Back in the 80s, they were doing coke all the time and, like, doing nothing and eating and stuff like that and, like, just smoking a day away. Like, they were they were high-key doing that. Speaking <laughs> of reasonable, 570. Oh, that was the first joke that landed for me. <laughs> oh, because I work in a restaurant. So uh-huh. like, oh, speaking of reasonable, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, your whole day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, $5,000 bottle of Because it's true. Yeah. That's reasonable. Are, are the people sometimes Gosh. like that? Yeah, the, they just yeah. throw the cards and it clanks. Yeah. Golly. No, I meant like just in terms of like the people are like, do they act like that? Uh, it, they don't blink. Most of the people don't even blink at five seventy. Like mm-hmm. it's just uh, they check it. They don't even look that. at what's on the check. For they just look and they throw mm-hmm. a card in. Oh, I almost meant like like the conversations you hear, the way like they talk. No, you that's listen. Like, that no, <laughs> sometimes, but. I wouldn't compare it to American Psycho. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think no, it takes no. it to an extreme. They're just making fun mm-hmm. of. Yeah. 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 Also, like we were saying, vices and addictions are are very prevalent. Mm-hmm. And the blue collar people are just looked down on, down upon. There's an indifference in the society and no one really truly knows anyone mm. at yeah. all. Yeah. Like po- the first conversations are why why can't we get in? Why are we here? This restaurant this is a chick's restaurant. This sucks. Why aren't we at Dorcia? Isn't that Paul Allen? Mm-hmm. And like they mistake three different people for Paul Allen. Right. Yeah. Which comes into play at the end. But so these are the things that I 
was seeing about this society and what it encourages. So I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Well, one of the things that you said that helped unlock the film for me is that on every business card, it says vice president. Yeah. <laughs> so they are literally all the same person. Yeah. And I didn't notice that. And then I start, started to think, oh, this movie says a lot more than I'm realizing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even even Lewis Carruthers, the guy at the end who's like, I got my business card too, guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Mal- Marcus Halberstrand, the actual guy, has wears the same suit, the same glasses. Mm-hmm. Looks almost identical to Patrick Bateman. Does the same. Th- he's in yep. the same department. Does exactly the same thing as him. But I have a slightly better haircut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like we're all the same, but I'm just trying to get the edge up on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like and they and don't it, even know what that edge is. Yeah, no, because they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. And what is and where do we see that edge up on people come up in the card scene? Like mm-hmm. you're saying, probably my favorite scene it's in the like, movie. <laughs> the dramatic flair of yeah. throwing down these business yeah. cards that all look pretty much the same to us. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, he's nice. sweating. Yeah, he's like he's upset. Sweating. His and in, his internal monologue is, "I can't believe Bryce prefers his card to mine." That's nothing, baby. But he's just like, like the color, it's bone. Mm-hmm. And the lettering, silly and rail. That's cool. <laughs> Raise the lettering. It's really well it acted would, all around. Yeah. Yes, it would. It would be like if I came in and I said, "Guys." Look at my awesome deluxe copy of Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nick's like, okay, that's cool, look babe. Mine, but look at this. It's look not at that far. It's not that far off. He's look got that me. Mando. He's got that Mando Lab steel book with the protector and the yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. on cardstock. That I, should be how yeah. the pr- this promo starts. Yeah, <laughs> we film us do it. Joe puts <laughs> out his VHS yeah. trash. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what like, the VHS? But actually, I a got a mini mint edition. A four K. And then, and then after not having anything for a long time, I come in with something that's like two thousand yeah. dollars, and you guys are like, "Oh, it's a, it's very nice, Chase." Yeah, good job, Chase. I got, I got the, I got the Japanese import, <laughs> the Japanese copy, import, lim- hop, hundred copy limited pressing of Godzilla minus one. <laughs> Five hundred dollars signed, signed by the signed by the entire CGI, ca- <laughs> signed by the entire special effects team. Oh, you guys are like, oh, that's that's real cool. It's nice. <laughs> like like we're laughing really hard because it's really funny, but, but it's but real, we could like, see it happen. Yeah, the the movie. We're in this movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like this movie is about us in some way. Yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. And then so, when he when uh, Bateman is doing the whole spiel at dinner that he probably heard on the news somewhere, and he says we need to reduce materialism in the youth, and his and Tim Bryce just like spits out his drink laughing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. like that's that's the whole yeah. part of that movie. We'll get right back to the conversation after this, but first, American Psycho has spawned an incredible amount of memes. In fact, there might even be a meme subculture just dedicated to Patrick Bateman alone. And one of the places that I encounter memes most is on Instagram. And if you're on Instagram and you haven't followed any of us from this podcast, then what are you doing? (laughs) We are on Instagram posting weekly. I, in particular, at All Things Narrative, post amazing promos that Nick creates for the podcast here. But I also post storytelling tips, inspiring quotes, and updates on what we're doing at All Things Narrative with our classes coaching, workshops, and events. But even more importantly, we would love to hear from you. So if you are on Instagram, not only will we encourage you to follow us, but we would also love to hear from you to get your input on these episodes and maybe any suggestions that you have for things that we might cover on this podcast in the future. We'd love to hear what your favorite episodes are, what your what your insights are, or just what movies you're watching this weekend. Let's connect. So check us out at All Things Narrative on Instagram. We'd love to meet you. And now, let's get back to the conversation. So I know you want to get to talking about identity, right? Talking about oh, yeah, that, Bateman's that- identity. I have a good segue that could kind of bring us into that. So to bring something narrative therapy related into it, there's this great book called Retelling the Stories of Our Lives by David Denborough. And he has a chapter in here about what's called the normative gaze or normality. So this is the idea basically that there is in every like culture, subculture, group, clique, whatever you want to call it, there is some unspoken standard of what is considered quote, normative behavior or normative discourse. I know I don't follow that. I'm going to read a couple quotes here because I I find this 
This quote in particular, I found, I read this and I said, oh my gosh, this is Patrick Bateman right here. In order to revise the storylines of our lives, we may need to question, quote, normality and find escape routes from experiences of failure. So I found that really fascinating because I think as I've thought about this film, this is what Patrick Bateman is searching for. He is searching for some sort of release from this, but he doesn't want to fully be released from this lifestyle. But yet there's something that's coming out in like the killings and the psychotic behavior. And of course, I mean, I'm not going to jump ahead to this, but there is my, prime, my favorite shot of the film is near the end when it has the, the words behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he's searching for. And any culture that has this like dominant belief system, this is something Denboro talks about in this book here. It talks about the sense of worth or self worth that you try to have to fit into that culture. So yeah, like he, he proclaims that he's in touch with his humanity when she's like, "You're inhuman." He's like, "I." And what what does he say? No, I I am yeah. in touch with, with humanity. My, yeah, yeah, I am I in think, touch with humanity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. that line hits because I think he's almost saying that everybody else here is not. Yeah. And he is trying to find one of the things that it talks about is like in these sort of cultures, the the sense of the individual and the value of the individual can get squashed in favor of the, you know, group conformity and stuff like that. So and, and again here it says and our effort to conform to what it means to be, quote, a real person in this culture, we are encouraged to keep rating and measuring ourselves against the standards and norms. Yeah. So I think that's like the business card scene. I think that's Ooh. the suit. Because it's a comparison game the, for all the these guys. Exactly. Even have, though, ironically, they're who's all... Who, who's dating who? They're all the same, ironically. Yeah. But, with, but, yeah. but with Patrick, you have to also remember his role models like Ted Bundy. He mentions him all the time. <laughs> Ted Gain. Yeah, yeah. Ted yeah. Exactly. Gaines. But Ted Bundy was considered normal like to people and that's why he was able to kill so many like women yes. because they're like oh mm -hmm. yeah this is this attractive man you know he's he seems normal he, you know I'll be fine and then even after he's been convicted and stuff like that like people loved him after that like yeah. after his death right so it's like what what does society even say is normal and it's funny because in the movie people like the owl the homeless guy says you're you're kind you're very kind mm -hmm. man i can tell you're kind mm -hmm. and the the girl the model that he was talking to at yeah. the club, yeah. she goes, "You're you you're really Something sweet, sweet, about, Something you. sweet yeah. about you." And then the next scene, he's got like a lock of her hair, and yep. her head's in the freezer. Like right after that, like yeah. society is attracted to this thing that is beautiful on the outside mm. and has an effort to maintain this beauty. And we'll talk about the beginning. That's monologue. sad, though. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's sad, ultimately, though. It's yeah. hollow, that's and there's absolutely. nothing there. It's yeah. frivolous. Nothing yeah. there. Yeah, Jason, go ahead. Let's get into that. So. I wanted to paste together his entire monologue, but we'll we'll do it in snippets the way that it does in the movie. But it starts off, and I'm don't worry, guys. I'm not gonna read the entire morning routine because that's like he's a TikToker. He's a TikToker. Yeah. This yeah. is the invention of TikTok. Yeah, this is the movie segment. <laughs> this straight up is a whole influencer segment. The, yes. the beginning where he's uh -huh. doing his exercise in his tidy whiteies. Yeah, bro. Watching Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> in the background. Uh, like that's wild. Yeah. Uh, a good companion piece. Yeah. I, yeah. I can vouch for that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Completely. where I saw it myself. <laughs> it's either Texas uh, Chainsaw. convicted right there. It's either Texas Chainsaw or porn on the TV. He's yes. so desensitized yeah. to sex yeah. and violence. That's and, but that's what is <laughs> that's what is psyched what he goes toward. And, well, I didn't and I'm gonna get into it after this, but I didn't send this video to you guys, and that's just because I forgot, but Guts. There is a interview with Ted Bundy where he says the two are very closely related. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They always have been, mm -hmm. like, in history, civilization. Yeah, so. Yeah, undoubtedly. So, my name is Patrick Bateman. I'm 27 years old. I believe in taking care of myself and a balanced diet and a rigorous exercise routine. Then moisturizer, then an anti-aging eye balm, followed by a final moisturizing protective lotion. And then he puts that mask on there is an idea of a patrick bateman some kind of abstraction but there is no real me mm. only an entity something illusory and though i can hide my cold gaze and you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable i simply am not there and now i'm actually going to read the the other part that comes later yeah I have all the characteristics of a human being. 
blood, flesh, skin, hair, mm -hmm. but not a single clear identifiable emotion except for greed and disgust. Something horrible is happening inside of me and I don't know why. Mm. My nightly bloodlust has overflown into my days. I feel lethal on the verge of frenzy. I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. Mm. So in the interviews that I had watched with Christian Bale, mm -hmm. who was playing Pat Bateman, one of the interviewers asked him, so what do you like about Patrick Bateman? And Christian Bale just goes, I, I, there, I, there is nothing I like about Patrick Bateman. <laughs> there is like, he has no redeeming qualities. And I saw this interview at snippet before I watched the movie and I thought, there's no way that this guy has no redeeming qualities. He has zero. Mm -hmm. I'm watching this movie and I texted him in the chat like, this guy sucks. Yeah. I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but out of the other cho possible choices, he was the only one that's like, I don't care about what led up to this guy's present, what his past was, why he did this. Like, it doesn't matter. This is not, like, he's an alien. He's completely, he's, he's not a real that. person. Your text, Nick, was, yeah. was hilarious. He's not a real, like, this guy's not a real person. He's ridiculous. The whole story is farcical. It's brilliant, but it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought that was the point, that he's an outsider yeah. looking in on humanity. Like, he, he he's not really definable. Yeah. No. He's an abstraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, and that's it, like this movie needed him to be that. And that's why it's so profound because in my mind, we see, and, and Joe was talking about it for me and why this, why I picked this movie, this man represents our potential. Like we're on a sliding scale towards Patrick Bateman that this guy is, you know, completely insecure he is super lustful. Mm -hmm. He only cares about what's on the outside. You know, he doesn't care about personality, only beauty. He can't, he even says like that there, it's impossible to empathize with people. And we'll get into that quote later. It's a good but, companion piece to our episode on yeah. Fight Club. Yeah. Masculinity. He, yeah. He only feels greed, disgust. He wants to fit in. He can't control his anger. Like this, this for me represents a life fully given in to, to sin and desire. And I have a, mm. a verse that this stood out to me. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is earlier. That's so true. That's For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Mm. I feel like these fit in very well with the movie and, and what yeah. I was getting it. But but Patrick Bateman is like so ridiculous that it's funny. And this is why this is so personal. But seeing my own sin and 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 how it affects me, I was seeing Patrick Bateman and the mm. potential for like if I did not have the Lord, if I did not have these things in my life that kept me grounded, I would be just like him or close. Like mm. this is what our potential is. And how I was saying that it all ties into Wally, to all the stuff that Brad Bird's been involved in, like Iron Giant and King of the Hill and The Incredibles and Ratatouille. Like Wally ties in all these movies and American Psycho and <laughs> and and Can you explain? Yeah, can, we need more. We need more on So this. what does Wally and King of the Hill and American Psycho having together within me. And I'll tell you, American Psycho is the trash heap on earth that has killed everything. But Wally is organizing it and, and putting it into cubes and, and sorting it out. Mm -hmm. And that's really great. Life does not come from it, though. You can only organize the trash, but that doesn't mean life returns. But the way Wally even keeps going as he attempts to do this mm -hmm. is he revels in the beauty in the world, the beauty that comes from goodness. And he sees mm -hmm. like the things that are human in terms of dancing and togetherness and just joy and curiosity. And this keeps him going. This keeps him living past everybody else, but that doesn't bring life back In actual life. It's what's needed to be shared amongst other people and ultimately Christ, that is what brings life back to earth. And for me, Wally ties together. So the things that I look to that inspire hope, because the thing is, I was so distraught by my own depravity at a point 
or my own potential. And I really enjoyed black comedy. I really enjoyed uh, dark things. I don't tell you guys about it because when you guys are talking about it and like, oh yeah, we watch this or that. I'm not like, it's not a critique or a criticism, but like it was, it's such a tender thing for me that I can't join in because I can get too far and I can indulge in the stuff I would read. Like I would, I would watch Squidbillies and Metalocalypse every morning before I went to school. Yeah, those are- Misery, I would read that. Like I would rush to read Misery from the shelf when I was in school. There's another manga called Berserk that I really liked reading that was just foul in terms of what it was shown. And mm-hmm. I couldn't really get into this because I would indulge. But this movie is so important because I'm able to tackle this part of myself mm-hmm. and just in a guarded way see, okay, what does this potential look like? And this is what it personified with me is this is what Patrick Bateman is. is he is my potential indulged in sin. Mm. And King of the Hill inspires me to be a better citizen and a better member of my community. Iron, Iron Giant is like self-sacrifice mm-hmm. and care and love and, and guidance. Like these things are so beautiful, important, and I focus so much on those because that's what pulls me out of that indulgence in mm-hmm. in what is ultimately not not fruitful. It's good to learn from and, and to tackle yeah. and and understand about myself and shouldn't just be like avoided and put for the rose colored glasses because mm-hmm. that that doesn't really get anywhere. But that's why this was so. This is the bottom of me, mm-hmm. and I think all of us, and that's why. I really wanted to get into this movie. Well, I think every one of us is picking these villains because we do see the bottom of us in them, Mm -hmm. right? I like that terminology there. You know, last week's episode was on Hans Landa and all these people who I argued are inglorious bastards in a sense. We are all capable of becoming that, right? In in, given the right circumstances. Yeah, manipulation, cruelty. Right. And I think what you're adding is now you're adding this other layer because American Psycho is obviously a completely different context Mm -hmm. of how this depravity can manifest. And I know when we get to your pick, Joe, and your pick, Nick, those are also going to be different contexts. And I think that's what's really important that I'm taking away is recognizing that any context, any culture, anything where there's a sense of normality, like quote unquote, the normative gaze here, right? Mm -hmm. There's always this tension between trying to like fit in, right? Patrick Bateman saying that and trying to not to lose yourself, to hold on to that which is, you know, the imagio deo, the image of God in you, and to not let that become corrupt by sin and all the things around us that we encounter in these spaces. The One of the things that I think I find fascinating is, one, the, the idea that Patrick Bateman has no redeeming qualities, and two, our hatred towards him, or hatred in general towards villains and characters. Mm-hmm. Because the quote, just because I want to fit in, like, this is such a universal. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. Like, it's like we have different contexts with our villains, but each one of us really could be found in each of our villains and our stories. Yes. So we're yes. really so connected to these stories. Mm-hmm. And when I look at Patrick Bateman, th- the thing that I find interesting with him is he is acknowledging the world that he's living in and he's seeing what it's done to him. And at the end, he goes through this sort of confession and mm-hmm. he does reach out. There is something in him that everyone else in his world doesn't have, mm-hmm. even though he is this very detached, alien-like monster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is something in him yeah. that's changing yeah. and that's saying, help me. Yeah. Yes. And yes. even that is something we can see is and draw out mm-hmm. and have a compassion towards this villain mm-hmm. who, instead of just going, I hate this guy, I never want to engage with this guy. Mm-hmm. That's also there, and that's also in us. Mm-hmm. So there's like this mm-hmm. caution there when we're watching these movies. Like, hey, yeah. what what is here? Like the seeking of understanding. Like, mm-hmm. what is here about this guy and about myself? Because it it can't just be supreme nihilism. Yeah, and when it is, those are the films that just completely yeah. throw out. Yeah, we yeah, we, absolutely. Yeah, we can't and we can't throw him away, and mm-hmm. we can't fully embrace him either. Which mm-hmm. what I see people tend to go to the extreme of that. It's like, this guy is not someone you should just want to become. 
but guess what? You are, he is part, part of you. Like, yeah. Like, this is in you. Like, you mm-hmm. can't just say, uh, like, you can't just throw him away. You have to acknowledge him. Mm-hmm. And you have to acknowledge the relation. And that's the point of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Nobody acknowledges him. Yeah. No. Right? No one does, and it creates that villain. Yeah. And he's repressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. the whole time, he actually wants to tell people. Yeah. There's something, he, he's, he's crying he's saying, out for authenticity. Yeah, yeah and, he, and he's telling people, like, and in and, and his dinner with Paul Allen, he goes, I like to dissect girls. Mm. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, it's his yeah. way of saying, can, can yeah. someone see me? Yeah. 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 And, he's, and, and people he, just laugh it off like it's a joke. Like it's a joke. Mm. Yeah. And he goes, did you know that Ted Bundy's first dog was named <laughs> <Yeah>. Lassie? <laughs> can you believe that? She goes, oh, wow. Who's Ted Bundy? And uh-huh. he shuts down and yep. goes for the nail gun. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something. I need, what's the tape for? I need it for... Uh, Taping something. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses are so so bad. Yeah. But uh and he has the joke. And some when they do come out, there are things that he says that aren't heard or aren't act- he doesn't actually say them. Like when he tells Evelyn that he needs to engage in in murder on a massive scale to to satisfy his needs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't hear him. Either she doesn't hear him. Or he doesn't actually say it, but he wants to. And it doesn't matter because those are both prevalent. Because society is just going to, can bat away and just Mm -hmm. shows, I don't want to get involved. It's the woman who paints over the room full of of bodies and says, you should leave. Like, do you know what happened here? And then just, you better not come back. Mm -hmm. It's the lawyer hearing what he said and going, this isn't funny anymore. I had dinner with Paul Allen 10 days ago, but no one can even recognize each other. So he is confessing to a society that does not know and doesn't want to know. Well, and the, out like, of it. Cause like there's a phone call he makes, the voice yes. he leaves in the middle of the night to, to the, the lawyer. lawyer. Yeah. And he sounds really distraught. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He sounds like he is just this, he's been holding it all in, but he reaches catharsis. Yeah. At the end of that call. But then the problem is that, it's yeah. It's just the lawyer matter. just kind of so doesn't wonderful. even know his name. It's, yeah, it's just a joke. He said like, Davis. That's a good Davis. joke. <laughs> that's like, but it's like, yeah, like, yeah. That's tragedy. Yeah, that yeah. is really tragic. It is a tragic yeah. ending and, yeah. for and, sure. And, and, and it starts to come out. He makes the Ed Gaines joke. He makes the Ted Bundy joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's met with, huh? And he's trying to find connection. And he's not he's trying getting to find it. a community. Oh, and it's like they're and they're just rejecting him. And that's that's what he needed. He he's he is opening up and mm-hmm. trying. But because there is no real community in this in this society, it's just falling on faint ears. No one even goes, "Hey, man, that was like I want to check in on you." What yeah. you said was concerning. That's like, off. There's <laughs> there's no there's no community, yeah. and there is the model that he goes that he tells. I'm into murders and execution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She goes, so. What do you of, like it? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, most people I know who are into mergers mergers and, and acquisitions yeah. don't really like it. Yeah. And that even is getting challenged in him too. He needs Randall. Mm-hmm. So he's, he needs one flu. He needs like yeah. He needs that space. He's mm-hmm. he's so repressed. Yeah, he needs the mental institution. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah he does. Does he need Nerds Ration? Uh, <laughs> oh, he would. He would, They would go back I and won. forth. All his friends are Nurse Ratched. Yeah. <laughs> All his friends are Nurse Ratched and Randall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they're all just oh, wild. Uh, That's like, horrible. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, those sounds two like a nightmare. Birth yeah. Patrick Bateman, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but With the origin stories. It's wild, and I think his monologue about himself that could be mm-hmm. said for all the characters. Like, there's an yeah. idea of Tim Bryce or Luther Carruth- uh, Lewis Carruthers. Thanks, phone book. But there's <laughs> had to do it. But like, you can't really identify their emotions too well. Some of them you can, like. There's the dis- but there oh yeah there's greed there's disgust when Tim Bryce is talking about I think it was Reagan on the on the TV but Lewis and Gene have something that he is so foreign to that he can't handle which is the uh, the the intimacy the desire for actual intimacy with and and it, and it can be mm-hmm. interpreted differently but with Lewis like he go like as soon as this guy pops out a better card than than him and everyone else there and they just don't want to admit it. This guy mm-hmm. goes, "Oh, I have a, I have a card too now, guys." And it's like gold lettered yeah. mm-hmm. and looks even better. Patrick Bateman's first instinct is just murder just, this man just, right this, now. Yeah, yeah. Just, like this guy showed me up. Like I, like Lewis Carruthers, the biggest dope in the whole plate. Like 
I have to kill him. Yeah. And then Lewis actually comes on to him and says that I've been interested in you. Oh, yeah. Let's talk and, about that. And from what I see, it's like complete. This And we'll get back to the confession part, too, after this, because this is yeah. really like the crux of it. Mm. But that's the confession right there. Yes. Lewis is yes, confessing it is. to him. It sure is. And there's a and there's a intimacy in that 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 is desired. And he doesn't let him in. You know? Oh, he's disgusted. Yeah, yes. He's absolutely. Like disgusted. and, and right. frightened. Like he he, he like starts to, shaking and he has the He has to wash his gloves. That's how <laughs> that's how disgust like I never would imagine like that's how disgusting somebody is, is to somebody yeah. else. There's there's I, no there was so, no physical contact anyway. Yeah. But there's no empathy or social tact yeah. because right. he could gracefully decline, hey man, I'm not into you. That's true. But like he has no he can't handle it. <laughs> well the like, thing he has he's no, crying out for the thing he's crying out for and he's lamenting at the end about this confession means nothing. He, Lewis is in the same spot. He's denying Lewis's it. confession means nothing either yeah. to him. Yeah, Pat Pat is denying the same thing that he wants in exactly other yeah. exactly jason any kind of final thoughts as we're wrapping up this yeah I'm this gonna, conversation yeah i'm gonna wrap this up so why is confession so important in self-identity and identity mm. within a community is because that's when you are really sharing like the raw essence of who you are because we tend to see the good and hide the or show the good and hide the evil and this is confession this is the pit of me can you accept this or at least go through this with me yeah and that's why we confess to our brothers and sisters and we Mm -hmm. confess to the lord Mm -hmm. because these are the ones that can intimately know us and he confesses to something that does not want to know and Mm -hmm. doesn't care and it's rejected yeah and that means he himself is rejected and he cannot i'm just going to read the the monologue for right now for this at the end there are no more barriers to cross All I have in common with the uncontrollable and the insane, the vicious and the evil, all the mayhem I have caused and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed. My pain is constant and sharp, and I do not hope for a better world for anyone. In fact, I want my pain to be inflicted on others. I want no one to escape. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. Mm. This confession has meant nothing. Mm. And so this is a life without confession, without deep intimacy with others yeah. and and like an exposure of, hey, this is the pit of me. Help me. See me, please. Mm-hmm. And the repression even makes these behaviors worse. This movie, to me, is really showing me about the people that I know about myself and my own struggles with with just <clears throat> opening up about, hey, I'm doing this wrong. Like, this is really horrible about me. I think this way helped me out. And mm-hmm. I found this in the church. There was someone that, like, I just spilled it all to. And I had a friend that you guys know who he said, man, me and, me and uh, so-and-so, like, we've told each other everything we've ever done, everything we've ever said, mm-hmm. like, all the bad stuff we've done is, like, we spent four hours on this and they were so close and so tight because once everything's out Mm -hmm. and it's known and you can go to that person whenever, like there's, there's so much freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And I see this in the young men and I see this in like the kids and just random people on online. There is so much repression that this moment that there is like a safety, like the homeless man. So this is a really quick aside. All of the minorities in this movie are in lower positions. Mm-hmm. This guy, Evelyn, comes up with a pig and he's scowling at the pig, and then he looks at the the server who might be like Filipino or, or he, just a brown skinned worker, and his like scowl intensifies and he follows this dude. Like, he's super racist, mm-hmm. and that's why he makes fun of Africa, brave Africa. Yeah, and this says he was too black sounding. It's like there is this just hatred of anything he can't. He doesn't have anything in common with. Mm-hmm. And I've seen, like, this, the minute, like, I'll be real honest. There, there'll be a video with a black man doing something wrong. And it, like, just the safety of that comment section is, like, yeah, see, this is why, blah, blah, blah. And, like, it just goes off. I'm sure you've seen that, Joe. There's no way you haven't. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, like, this minute there's safety and there is confession possible, it comes out. Is like an attack, yeah, and it's not healthy, and this is not good for for us as men. But that's why I felt like this was so important, just to to me and to how we relate to others. Is this this has to come out 
in a healthy way. Yes. For there to be any actual true intimacy and, and knowledge and per- places that I've seen are the only ways that this can happen is our confession to the Lord and a confession to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Because there is forgiveness and because there is an understanding and there's a mercy Mm -hmm. and you will not, you won't really find that in the world. It's, it's, it's what? That's so good, Jason. And I'll, I'll end with, I got a quote from a, a David Denborough quote I'll end with here that says, when we choose to resign from this sense of normality, right? The normative gaze and uninvited expectations, we can instead turn our energy towards acts of care for ourselves, for others, and the world around us. Patrick Bateman talks about, oh, we should be doing more to help the homeless and all that. And he encounters the homeless, a genuine human being, and, and stabs him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I think like- They don't have anything in common. Yeah. I think those are our options, you know, is if we want to escape kind of like these pressures to conform that we find ourselves in, you can either try to resort to sex and violence, as many people do, <laughs> or how different would it have been if he, you know, and all of us here had a different interaction with the homeless guy, right? If we chose to actually take our words, the things that we- know to be true and to actually act that out in the world in a positive way. So now any final thoughts before we wrap? Hopefully at the end we can say this confession has meant everything. Mm. So we'll end it here. And next week we're going to get into Joe's pick. Yep. So we'll get to see Joe's villain. Mm-hmm. His villainy come out. It's all a lie. We're recording it now. He's not, he's lying. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So well, thank you guys. Thank you, Jason. And until next time, we actually have to go return some videotapes. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Live a Meaningful Story podcast, produced by All Things Narrative. If you'd like to learn more about our coaching, workshops, events, please check out allthingsnarrative.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at all things narrative. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tune in next time as we continue exploring the stories we love and the stories we live. Take care.